Hi everybody, my name is Nelson Everhart. I'm a composer for video games. You may have heard my music on Wizard 101 or Pirate 101 from King's Isle Entertainment. I'm also the composer for a game called Crowfall from Artcraft Entertainment. But uh, there was a game that I wrote music for I went up working at a company called Acclaim Entertainment called Vex. Vex was the company's foray into a character-based 3D platformer. It was released for PlayStation, the Nintendo GameCube, and the original Xbox. Unfortunately, this game was published in Acclaim's dying days, so the first thing that goes when a company is starting to lose money seems to be the marketing for the games. They, they're hoping that the word of mouth will be enough to generate an audience for the game. It didn't seem to be the case here. There's the Wikipedia page. It was 2003. Yeah, here's all the, these are all the guys I used to work with, and there's me. Yay, I'm on the internet. The game itself was a lot of fun. I found a number of YouTube channels that they all pretty much say the same thing. They're like, wow, this game is pretty fun. I'm, I can't believe I didn't really know it was around. It's a game that I've always held near and dear to my heart. I got to write some really neat music that kind of fused orchestra elements with more synth elements. I got to record some live players uh, from, from our local symphony and ballet here. I came up with the idea to kind of revive this music and for me it was a fun project because I had to pull in a lot of old uh, files and I actually had to buy some old gear that I used to have in my studio. Acclaim went under I think in 2004 so all of my studio gear went with that so I, I had to refine that gear to get some of my sounds back. Now this track did not have an official title this was just for one of the forest worlds. Vex is broken up into the normal worlds like forest world and mountain world and desert world and fire world and water world and so it was called forest ac1 meaning activity center one and i've seen it out in the wild on the web called uh redwood heights which is one of the names of the forest levels i'm not sure if it conformed to that but it's a good enough title as any we're going to listen to this all the way through uh, and I'll kind of scroll around and show you show you what's going on here in my pro Tools session if you look over at the left um Anything that says new is something that I've added. It's either to replace old sounds that I either don't have, can't find, uh, or just I don't like anymore. Yeah, so in this case, I actually stacked in the new choir sound on top of the old choir sound. Uh, so in the case of the harp here, this used to be a harp sound coming from the Roland JV2080. And I just didn't think it was up to snuff anymore, so I replaced it with the... A uh, new one that's coming out of a software sampler called Contact. Uh, the DM Pro is an Alesis drum module, and it's normally used as what's called the drum brain for like an electronic drum kit. I use that all the time. So I wound up finding one on eBay and ordering that and just recording the output. And this guy down here is an old sample library from a company called Spectrosonics, and this was a uh, a patch in the Liquid Grooves library, which is still an awesome library and you can grab it on their uh, website. Finally, let's go listen to the new remixed track called Forest AC1 or Redwood Heights if you prefer. 2003 from the long dead Acclaim Entertainment Company, slightly remixed.
that's where I say and that's the loop I decided with Vex since I'm remixing them I just want to create some closure there so the the track actually ends at that point so this track here uh, is called Swampy it's one of the patches in Liquid Grooves and you notice that there's a lot of stuff going on just on that one key (laughs) so that'll just keep looping around for as long as you hold that that key down so sometimes with older libraries it might drift over the course of four bars so I got into the habit of re-triggering the note every bar to make sure that we were staying in sync there and in this library the different keys have different samples assigned to them so that's the main loop and then up here it's another version of that kind of with a more traditional kick and snare pattern and a technique that I messed around with a lot I would have kind of a bed track down here but then trigger the other samples sometimes it gave like a nice little fill kind of just added a little punch there and start to do like little fill things in there i was like looking for inspiration and using these loops in different ways layering them So um, so these warm violins are one of my favorite patch for the JV2080, but I didn't really think that they stood up to some of my newer patches. So this here is the violin solo sound. And then on top of that, I layered a violin section sound in there. try and make it thicker and fuller uh, and then I had a sample cell uh, section I think it was the Miroslav V2 orchestral strings library that I used for uh, the tremolo violins now I got some better ones and these are from Project Sam and a library called Symphobia and what's neat these days instead of just having a patch for each different articulation you want to use I just have one patch and then I can just use key switches to change the different articulation so there's the tremolo uh when i wrote this track uh the swampy sample from liquid grooves that was definitely uh, where it started so i would just kind of set that up to play and then i you know would improvise on top of that until i'd get something interesting so the beginning here we're just going back and forth from an a to an e flat chord it's still kind of vague you know the, the tonality here so we don't really know where we are where we're going and then it throws that e flat chord in here So the chalice and the harp are really just kind of exploring around and it gives it a very mystical, magical, I'm not sure where this is heading feel. And then these chords kind of start getting a little more exciting. Ah, okay, hear that? So So if I click this up here, we don't hear anything. And the reason we don't hear anything is because it's actually changing the sound we're using up here in the string ensemble. So at the beginning it was using the tremolo sound, which tremolo is when you move the bow on a a stringed instrument back and forth really, really quick. So you get that kind of shaky, nervous sound. For that last chord, I wanted it to open up a little bit because we're getting more and more and more excited. So I wanted it to sound more confident. So right at that point, we switch to the just normal Uh, sus and it kind of blossoms and blooms in here all right now getting into the woodwinds initially i had a uh, patch on the 2080 that was like woodwind section or woodwind ensemble or something like that i wanted to to differentiate it up here for the remix so i use some different sounds i have an oboe i have an english horn i have a bassoon 
and then replacement woodwind ensemble that I have. So the woodwind ensemble is still playing underneath it, but I'm using some other sounds to kind of take the focus off it. Most of these are from a library called Cinewinds from Cinesamples. There you go, there's the oboe sound. And then add the bassoon. So this part is largely exposed. It was, it was pretty hard to get right. Uh, the harp is kind of giving you some melodic context here. So that part sounds weird when you hear it soloed. Little bend down. Okay, that's something you could do in a real instrument and make it sound a lot better than than using pitch bend to kind of simulate that on a sample. But in context, I think it kind of works there, especially when it's hidden by all the kind of stacks of choir. Here, this is a fun part uh, to write. It's kind of chaosy, all right there. This is the melody part here. Very dreamlike in there. Here, so here's the tube, I just doing the bass notes. I love the tuba so much. I got a couple different horn patches on this. The original sound I was using was from the orchestral card on the JV2080. Uh, it was a very flexible sound. It was able to do chords really well. It was able to do solos. It sounded pretty good. Uh, newer sounds that sound better doing particular things. So this guy was providing some of the... kind of forceful but still uh, uh, solely idea and then these other horns were able to add some uh, a little some more smoothness to it sound I added. This track from Vex, not so much, but a lot of other tracks I used a lot more synthetic kind of texture, and I sort of wanted to put that back in. So this is a brand new sound uh, to the track. Really added for some of the, just the, the impact. This is why I had trouble replacing the JV2080 uh, gong sound. Even when I have, while I have better gong libraries, the way I was playing this, you can kind of see that I'm sort of going really quickly back and forth uh, between those two notes to perform kind of a roll on the gong. A lot of times you don't just hit a gong, you kind of warm it up by tapping it a few times. So here's a nice little roll into the this, uh, gong smash there. <laughs> And with that sound, you could kind of put the gong uh, to hit different pitches that, that worked in different, the different tonalities going on as I modulate from key to key throughout the piece. It's so weird and kind of dreamy and, and exotic there. When we got to the next section, I wanted to try something else. So this is the uh, DM Pro. So this is a uh, kit called Ethnic Kit from the Alesis DM Pro. You can, you can see how each one of these different notes is a different uh, instrument, uh, which makes it really hard to just kind of replace, which necessitated refinding the DM Pro. This kit, I did use a lot when I wanted something. I wanted kind of like a drum groove, but not like a, a typical drum groove. So here's these two uh, drum tracks playing together. That's the Ethnic Kit with the Swampy Drum Loop from Lick of Grooves. So 
so these are two completely different, you know, separate approaches to drums, and uh, they, f I think, it fits together really nicely there. All of these little answering string parts are something new. Uh, I, I think it felt a little empty without having a little bit more harmony there. So uh, until these brass chords kind of came in, I wanted to put those in there to give you just to give you a little sense of, of forward momentum. And then more more of the double reeds. Spackles. I think that's supposed to be sparkles. So it doesn't really it doesn't really get bigger there, it kind of breaks it down again. And we start building again. Thanks everybody. This has been a lot of fun for me. I'm going to do some other Vex tracks. This kind of shows you where I came from. If you have found this at all interesting or useful, please leave a like. I'd be really happy if you subscribed and did all of those other things that, you know, everybody tells you to do at the end of every single video on YouTube ever. All right, guys. Thank you very much. See you later.